This is JJ Solomon. This is Ray Bradshaw, Mr. I2B8. Mr. B Boys can't touch me on my worst day. And this is the Spit Bucket Podcast. The Spit Bucket Speedbag is brought to you by Diggles. Welcome back to the Spit Bucket Podcast. This is episode eight already, man. Time moving fast. I'm JJ Solomon. It's Mr. ILTBA, Kareem Bresh. I'm Mr. ILTBA. Mr. B Boy can't touch me on my worst day. What's popping? Not his worst day. You can't touch him. Ooh, ooh, Let's go and get into the speed bag, man. It's we got a big weekend of fights. April 9th. April 9th has got two big cards. Let's let's start off with Ryan Garcia versus Emmanuel Tago. This is a big fight, right? You gotta understand Ryan Garcia. Let's give it up to Ryan Garcia. He's one of the young best fighters on the planet. JJ Solomon. That's just clearly no debate. And with him going through everything he went through, uh, with his mental struggle, and we salute Ryan Garcia because it's a lot of folks around the world who don't have the courage to talk about that. And he was one of the guys who has a big social media platform who came to the forefront to tell us about that. That's big for a fighter who at his level, and he got that taken care of. The excitement about seeing Ryan, the Flash, Garcia, come back April 9th in the Alamo Dome. Mm. Oh, my God. San Antonio knows uh, Against to Emmanuel Togo, like a, a fighter who, who, who built for this. Oh, yeah. This a guy, J.J. Solomon, who lost his first bout, and he ain't lost none since. 32-1. and yep. one. People sleeping on him, bro. Those fighters from Ghana ain't no joke, dude. No joke. So if Ryan isn't ready for it, which I think he will be, if Ryan's not ready for this fight, it could be a sad day for him, but here's why I'm excited. Like, to your point where you were saying, Ryan Garcia bounced back from, from some mental health issues, and I'm never going to – he took a lot of criticism for that, man. I'm never, ever going to get on here and talk trash about somebody who's going through that because if you've never gone through it, you don't know. And boxers, it's almost like – it's almost a shame whenever you talk about uh, mental health issues because we've got that environment where you got to be manly. you got to be tough. You can't show – vulnerabilities and weaknesses like that but ryan garcia like 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 ray said i mean that was that took some balls to come out and say listen i'm gonna have to take it some time away you know it's not up to us to decide what was really going on or what but do say he had mental health issues he's back now here's the thing no more excuses no more like golden boys got uh they don't got canelo no more they've got ryan garcia and virgil ortiz two mm-hmm. fighters with beautiful potential oscar de Loya, it's time to make these fights happen like and, and let's be honest if, if we're looking at the fighters, both of them oh, yeah. got high ceilings, right? But when we look at each one individually, Ryan Garcia, he has the, the full package. The stardom. The, the it, stardom, yeah. right? And, like, Ryan Garcia is a guy who we seen coming. Like, we see all of these other young fighters. This is his moment. I do expect him to win this fight. In a dominant fashion, right? Because of all the naysayers and the, the people calling him Mr. Shadow Boxer. And mm, saying this Instagram name. guy. But look, he do have this tough opponent in the manual to go who's going to come to fight, right? Mm-hmm. So Ryan Garcia ain't just coming into no fight. Golden Boy ain't just putting him in a mix of just against another guy. They could have easily done that for Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia, after being out so long, he could have did that. But you know what Ryan Garcia said? He said, no, I want the toughest guy I can get. And I think he got that. And I think Ryan Garcia is going to show up in San Antonio and show out. But quick thing, real quick, before we say that, I'm going to tell you my first experience. Oh, with Ryan? Meeting Ryan Garcia when I knew he was that guy. Like, it was questions on him, his boxing early. We didn't know if he was going to make it to this moment, but he did. But when I tell you, when he came down here to Dallas, Texas, and like how the line was oh, I remember at, at seeing Maple it all. Apple New Boxing yeah. Gym from here to around the corner. Yeah, all the fathers, mothers driving their kids hours and hours <laughs> to come see this guy. This dude is a bona fide superstar, and I think. 
uh, April 9th at the Alamo Dome. He gonna show up and show out and show everybody why he, why he is who we thought he was. Bro, the future is beautiful in that weight division. Oscar De La Hoya, it's been rumored that he's already taken offers for his next fight. I don't think they're overlooking Saturday's fight, but they're already talking to Ken Bosa's people. They're already, they want, they want the big fight for Garcia. If he gets through, through Saturday, it looks good. Boy, the sky, and now, now finally we have an opportunity to see the Ryan Garcia that we've been anticipating for years. He's a young man, he's coming up, now it's time to happen. You know the thing with these fighters from Ghana, they got hard heads, bro. Yeah. But you know what Ryan Garcia has, that mean ass <laughs> left hook to the body. So it could end with a body shot. You're not gonna yeah. knock, I don't know that you're gonna knock out this guy with some head shot. And to be honest, when I look at Ryan Garcia, out of all the lightweights, I see the guy with them. Like people sleep on this guy, but I see him with everything, the power, the range, the move, the the skill set. I see him with everything. And I think April the night, Ryan Garcia going to rewake everybody up who was sleeping on him. And another thing, I think it's a great move uh, in Ryan Garcia because the thing about when you're a young fighter like that, it, even though he got a lot of lack for not want to be with Canelo no more, I think it was a good thing for him to go to an experienced guy like Joe Guzan, yeah. who going to have that one-on-one -on -one time with him and going to be able to perfect Ryan Garcia into what he needs to be. We can't knock Ryan Garcia for choosing Joe Guzan. This was a move that he needed to do to get that one-on-one -on -one time because when you were Canelo, it's Canelo. Canelo, show. it's the Canelo show. And I, I get it. He took a lot of help for that too, believing. Say, saying that all these excuses, he's leaving Reynoso's gym, but hey, Saturday, April 9th, San Antonio, Texas. It's time to put up a shut up, and I'm looking forward to seeing it, man. Same night, though. Let's talk about the next fight. Like I said, loaded night for boxing. Triple G versus Murata for, uh, yeah, it's, they're, they're unifying their belts at 160. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I love it. It's exciting. Every time you got a unification fight, uh, that's on the line, and when you got a guy like Triple G, who a big name in boxing, Ron Morata, who a big name in this Japan, country, yep. in Japan, where he from, you know, unification, I'm always excited about I love that. It. That just showed me we one step close from becoming uh, undisputed in that division because it'll be only two more belt holders after, and that fighter just will have two more belt holders he need to give before. So I'm excited about this fight. I want to see if Triple G still that guy. You know, I've been hearing rumors and sources. Everybody said, boy, y'all better watch out for this new Triple G coming back because he know he got that third fight with Canelo oh, if he yeah. get this victory. And, and a lot of people say Triple G lost. I mean, won that first fight. He was talking I said about that. Me too. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. The whole world saw I, it. Talk, I thought Triple yeah. G won that first fight. But then Canelo came back. He won the second fight. Now, like I said, the third fight makes sense. But I'm hearing this Triple G ain't telling me about. That's his training camp. Yeah. Those ain't doing it. They telling me this guy is ready. Man, he better show up because he's getting it. I don't think he's 40 yet, though. I think he'll be 40 but come September. But Father Time, bro, he's undefeated. And... Uh, We've seen Triple G slow down a little bit. He better not be sleeping on Murata. The fight's in. The fight's going to be in Japan, so you got that that working against Triple G. Um, obviously, the guy's a knockout monster. Obviously, he could take a shot. But if Murata goes out there and boxes, we could see the Canelo Triple G fight get get halted because because I wouldn't be stunned if Triple G loses. We've seen these guys get old overnight. Um, I want to see Triple G pull it off. I want to see him get the belt. I want to see him come back. Uh, but we'll see, man. I'm excited about that fight, too. What are your thoughts? Who do you think is going to take it? Oh, I got Triple G, man. I think it's just too much on the line, uh, Jose Solomon. I think oh, yeah. it's too much on the line for Triple G. If he knows if he put on a great performance, right, him and Canelo, it makes sense. Triple G got a whole country behind him. Canelo not only got a whole country behind him, but he got the whole world behind him. Damn sport it behind just makes mm -hmm. sense. I'm looking forward to it. April 9th is going to be great. Um, Sunday, uh, I, I think Triple G takes it, man. Like you said, there's way too much on the line. I think he knows what's at stake. I, I think he knows this could be his last big payday before he sets <laughs> rides into the sunset. <laughs> so he needs to be sure to lock it down. There's just a lot on the line, and I think Triple G is going to come out and make a statement. And uh, 2022 might be his last year, but hopefully he's got a couple more sh big shows for us. Um, next one I wanted to talk about, bro. Uh, last Saturday, Savannah Marshall 
with the third round knockout against who was it? Fer, Fer, Frank Herman, Herman, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Still, that that's not the big thing. It was the third round knockout. She did what she was supposed to do. A lot of pe people been talking a lot about Savannah Marshall, but the end of the fight. What happened? That Ooh, was great. Man. Clarissa Shields uh, just coming <laughs> in the ring, scintillating. You know, seeing her and Savannah Marshall because if everybody don't know from the two one four to across the pond, this has been building up. Yep. Clarissa Shields only lost to one person ever in her life in the sport of boxing, you know, and that was Savannah Marshall in the amateurs. Look at Savannah Marshall, undefeated, doing what she do, been doing what she, she Skills do. Skills and knockout power. Skills, knockout power. Clarissa Shields, been doing what she need to do. Skills, knockout uh, power. some knockout power, uh, becoming undisputed. Confidence. In two divisions. Yep. Man, understand me when I say this, JJ, this is the one fight that I am ready to see. Like this right here, this fight, this fight right here in women boxing, this fight really could, real. it's already transcendent. Like women boxing is at an all time Oh yeah, moment. man, it's but exciting. this one right here, this is gonna transcend women's boxing to another well, level. Hell yeah, you've got Savannah Marshall and Clarissa that's in the talk, in talks. You've got obviously Serrano and, uh, Serrano and Katie Taylor at the end of April. And then I don't know if, if we hadn't talked about this, but Ebony Bridges Ebony looked, Bridges. looked, bro, she looked damn good in her last <laughs> fight. And I'm going to be the first to admit, I didn't think much of Ebony Bridges. I didn't think she could fight. I have seen a couple of clips of her. I thought she was just showing off her body and all that corny <laughs> shit at the weigh-ins. She shut me up. And it had nothing to do with what she was wearing at the weigh-in. <laughs> Ebony Bridges looked good. Women, women's box. She's a champ now. She's a champ. Uh, she beat a champ that from, she's been holding a belt since 2017. So women's boxing. It's getting exciting, bro, finally. <laughs> so there's a lot of good things happening. These women can fight. Clarissa you know? Shields, Savannah Marshall. Ooh, Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall. I hope they make it happen. Again, 2022 could be the year for women's boxing where it just gets put to that next level, bro. So let's make it happen. Boy, say this right here. Like this, <laughs> when, when Sean Showtime Porter said this, it struck from the 2-1-4 <laughs> to across the pond. Now look. Sean Porter stated, Ugas was a tougher fighter than uh, Earl Spence Jr. Yoganis Ugas was a tougher fighter than Earl Spence Jr. JJ, when he said that, that struck, like I said, from the 2 1 folk to across the pond. But what's your thoughts on that, sir? I don't make too much of the triangle theories, man. I think it's an interesting point. I, think he, I don't think he had to say that. I think we all saw it with our own two eyes. That Sean Porter had more of a heart. I mean, he arguably lost that fight against Ugas. You know what I mean? Like, Ugas gave it to him. That was a hell of a fight. But we saw that Sean Porter struggled more with Ugas because there's a lot of people that thought Sean Porter could have had to win against Spence. It was that knockdown, knockdown for me that, that did it for me. But uh, Sean Porter is an awkward fighter. So, you know, they say styles make fights. I don't make too much of the triangle theories, but it is an interesting point that he's making. Like, he's been in the ring with both of them. He, Sean Porter's never been, nobody's ever mopped the floor with Sean Porter, in my opinion. So the fact that he's coming out and saying, listen guys, I, I think the more important thing out of this is for the general boxing public who's thinking Spence is gonna go in and win this fight because it's Spence. No, they need to, they need to be careful, bro, because Ugas can shock the world. And Porter's just letting us know that he's a legitimate contender. I don't take too much of it like, oh, does that mean Spence is gonna lose the fight? No, I just think it means Spence needs to take this fight serious, and the fans need to realize that this is a damn good fight, a good matchup. Well, in some cases, I do take triangle theories into effect. Mm -hmm. And with this case, this triangle theory effect, where Sean Porter is saying that Ugas was a stronger fighter than uh, Earl Spence, when I look at Sean Showtime Porter, I look at an honest man, a stand-up individual, like inside and outside mm -hmm. the ring. Sean Porter is different from these other fighters that we see in boxing who flashy and flaunchy. Sean Porter has always been a stand-up individual who, who held himself high in boxing, and he was a good role model for the sport. So with him making his assessment, J.J. Like Solomon, it. on this situation, I think it's an honest assessment. But great point from you. It, it doesn't play into the fact of who gonna win this fight. But with Sean Porter saying that, it, it should wake everybody yep. up. 
who's sleeping on your game is Ugas who don't think he have a chance in this fight. Like, it's ridiculous. I heard people sc scrolling up, up they, I be scrolling up my articles, hearing people saying, oh, Spencer's gonna watch this guy. Well, you had an honest man in Sean Porter who was in the ring with both of these guys who stated that Ugas was the tougher fight. But we're gonna get into we see that. You, man. A little bit more later. Oh yeah, we actually are gonna get into. We got we some more spins so, coverage at the but end. That was, that was that was great. Here's the thing, real quick. Ugas beat Manny Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. That's not easy. Mm -hmm. He beat Manny Pacquiao. He gave Sean Porter a hell of a fight. Mm -hmm. like I said like it could have gone. It, I think it should have gone to Ugas. You can't sleep on the man. He's made big things happen. The guy's determined. He's a Cuban boxer. We know Cubans have um, great boxers, disciplined boxers, high boxing IQ. So don't sleep on the man. I'm still leaning towards Spence, but not for a second do I think this is going to be a wash. Not for a second. But uh, looking forward to that. We got a big fight announcement, man. You know you and Donair are coming back for the rematch in June in in uh, in, in uh, Japan. My bad. I mean, I might be wrong, dude. Uh, I said earlier that Triple G was fighting in Japan with Murata. I don't know where that fight's at. I'm confusing that with uh, Inouye. So my bad, folks. Inouye and Donair is going to be in, in Japan. Mm -hmm. Um June 7th, the rematch. You know, you I know he's all arguably top five pound for pound fighter. Oh, People absolutely. sleep on that man, dude. He's a monster. Absolutely. Dog, I'm excited about this fight. I'm worried for Donaire. Because I know he's a monster, bro. He tore his retina on that first fight. From the moment he tore his retina to the end of the fight, he outlanded a Donaire significantly. I think like 80 something to 20 something punches. He took all of Donaire's shots. I think Donaire is one of the Baddest champions we've had in the past 20 years. Not afraid of anybody. This just proves it. He's doing a rematch against a top fighter and don't air towards the end of his career. So talk about it. What do you think? Yeah, he a monster. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's he a monster. That dude is a monster. But one thing I respect about Nonato De Niro, like in his own right, he is a monster. Oh, yeah, too. man. This guy is a warrior. Like, Nonato De Niro is the epitome of what boxing oh. is about. Facts. If you try to Preach. count this guy out, yeah, don't don't do that. Yeah, give a new Dude. credit. Give a new credit. He came back from a torn retina. You, I mean, he had a torn retina, and he fought through it and won that fight. It just show how great he is uh, as a fighter. But when I look at a guy like Nonito De Niro and what he's been able to do over his career, like. He is a guy who is in this fight because one thing he got, he still could pop. He still have the boxing abilities. And most importantly, this uh, far in his career, he has the experience. Oh, yeah, man. And I think the experience is going to give him a real shot at going to Japan and possibly pulling off the upset. I, I'm leaning towards a new. I'm, am, not, yeah. I'm not counting now. No Donaire. Donaire's had a, a a resurrection in his career. He's looking fresh again. He's looking motivated. Um, with that being said, though, dog, you know you is on a different level, <laughs> man. It's a different level. There are different points in the career. I hope I hope Donaire doesn't see any big damage. I think he's got a chance. The dude can fight, but but you know he's a different monster. But man, this is gonna be a good fight. If you if you don't know who either one of these guys are. Do yourself a favor and go back and watch the first fight and watch all of the Noe's fight. Watch all the Donaire fight. These guys are the class of the sport. The sport needs more people like them, especially Donaire. I can't wait for the fight. I think Noe is going to show the world again why he's constantly in the pound for pound conversation. Oh, uh, what we got? NFT talk real quick. Oh, let's go, man. Everybody. April 16th is right around the corner. The 2 one folks yep. across the pond. We got the TSB NFT.com. If y'all trying to rock with the spit bucket, me, my guy JJ Solomon, and the two biggest suites, VIP Cowboy Stadium for Earl of True Spence Jr. versus your Gainus Ugas for a unified fight that one of them fighters leaving at the end of the night will have three belts and be one fight away uh, from becoming undisputed. Come rock with us, the spit bucket at Cowboy Stadium. All you have to do, like I said, go on TSBNFT.com. Download Coinbase, purchase your NFT. Not only will this NFT get you in this fight with us, this is the kickoff. You know, this is just the beginning of it. It ain't nobody from the 2 1 folks across the pond who covering boxing, who doing how me and my guy JJ Solomon doing. This is just the cusp 
of what we're doing. This is the kickoff for the people who go get our big head collections to see how we coming. So going forward, anybody who have one of these specialized NFTs of our big head collection, y'all will be able to rock with us in any event we do going forward. Canelo, September, we'll be there. Uh, what else we got? Man, you're going to be there too. So go by, check out tsbnft.com. Very top of it, it says browse the collection. Holler at us if you need help grabbing them. It can be a little, it can be a little bit confusing. We'll walk you through it and help you start your NFT collection for the future. So you can start making some money for you and your family. It's not just about boxing, but we're going to get you started. But anyway, we can't wait to see you. April 16th is right around the corner. Can't wait to see you all for the Spence fight. Uh, hey, we got some boxing history. We're unlocking the vaults here in a little bit after the break. DC with Diggers Elite Cleaning, y'all. We have two deodorizers here. What we specialize in is one of the things that makes our brand stand out. When you come clean your home, you can get one of This is one of our deodorizers. It's a little light scent, but most of our customers love it. But if there's something going on in your home, it's that smell that you cannot get rid of. Hit us up. This is the deodorizer that you might want to use. I don't care if you got a skunk in the building. This is going to basically get rid of that smell. Welcome back. It's time to unlock the vault, open up the vaults and bring up some boxing history where we get a little opportunity to educate you guys on things that you may or may not have known about our beautiful sport. Let's go right off the top. Let's do some birthdays. Uh, we've got April 4th, Mr. Merciless Ray Mercer. Woo! Jeez, 61 years old. Happy birthday, Ray Mercer. Happy Heavy birthday, Ray Mercer. Moment. Do it. When, what when, are you going to talk about? I know what you're going to talk about. The, when he beat the bejesus. <laughs> Tommy Morrison. Uh, Tommy he Moore. killed Tommy Morrison. He beat the bejesus. Bro. <laughs> but no, dog. He, listen, I, I saw a Ray Mercer interview, right? <laughs> I saw a Ray Mercer interview that was great. Listen, he said he knew. <laughs> you still laughing at that? I'm sorry. Was done. All, right. All right, listen. Let's keep it going, man. Listen. No, no. Keep it going. Listen. Ray Mercer. Had an interview. He said mm -hmm. he his partner, his coach, somebody knew could tell that Tommy Morrison was was juicing, mm -hmm. which could very well be be the case. I mean, I, I think he tested positive. But anyhow, mm -hmm. they said the game plan is to go in there and and let let them steroids wear off, and in the fifth round we'll put them away. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what they did. Ray Mercer was losing that fight, oh, okay. and he started seeing it, bro. He <laughs> murdered Tommy Morrison. Dog, <laughs> so you remember I that? He was gonna kill. Like that's the first charge that you thought you. Would actually see in the box. One hundred percent. I thought he was dead. I was a little bitty boy. <laughs> I was watching because I liked Tommy Morrison, and I was like, "Dad, turn this shit off, come man! On, this guy's dying." Like, come on, man! If you grew up on them Rocky movies, Tommy Duke, see, Tommy Gunn, right? Duke, Tommy Gunn. You see Duke, yeah, like in in Rocky Five, he was a part of you. Yep. And like, that boy Ray Mercer to see him take a. That's when you knew Rocky was fictional. <laughs> Hell yeah. Boxing was real. <laughs> Do me a favor, go check out Ray Mercer versus Tommy Morrison, fifth round. Let's get into it, oh, man. Yeah, what April you got? the 5th, man. Shout out to Kelly the Ghost Pavlik, man. Shout out to Kelly Pavlik, man. You know, he did the unthinkable. He won the Cleveland's finest when he shocked the world and uh, beat uh, Jermaine Taylor. You know, that was oh, just man. unthinkable, you know, because Jermaine Taylor was at an all-time yep. high. But, you know, you heard stories of you heard Leonard Ellaby of uh, Mayweather Promotions come out, you know, not being racist, but he say, man, y'all better stop talking about Kelly Pavlik. That white boy could fight. Yes. He said that white boy came to all the gyms and beat up all the black fighters. So shout out to Kelly Pavlik. Happy birthday. 40 years old, bro. He's a big 40. Enjoy it. I will say, to your point, he's from Youngstown, right? Youngstown, mm -hmm. Ohio. Kelly Pavlik breathes boxing. Yeah. He breathes it, lives it, breathes it. He still he still coaches it. So And you can see it in his style of fighting. So shout out to Mr. Pavlik, the ghost, 40 yeah, years old. And we're looking old. forward to getting you on the podcast we, real yeah, soon. About Kelly. time for us to get you on the show, Kelly. We had a chance to actually to kick with him over at, the, uh, oh, yeah, at, at the Don, Don King, King at Don King Ranch. And uh, then another thing Kelly Pavlik do, you know, uh, y'all make sure y'all go 
Oh yeah, check so out his, his podcast, his, his Instagram. Also, because he always giving out tips about boxing. Mm -hmm. And when you got a guy who done did as much as Kelly Padlet did, if you a young fighter right there, y'all need to take heed on it. For sure. What else we got next? Oh, we got Julian J. Rock Williams. And also April the 5th. He turned a big 3-2. Happy birthday, uh, J. Rock. Like, one thing about J. Rock, J. Rock did the unthinkable too. Like, this is the guy who did the unthinkable. This was <laughs> when uh, everybody was looking at Jerry Hurd like he was different because he was that guy at 154. We didn't think this Surprise guy and Julian me. Williams was going to uh, beat this guy up. Man. Bad. Bad. Yeah, that was like convincing. He did. Like, that was a convincing ass whooping. <laughs> Hell Julian yeah. J. Rock Williams, you know, uh, he said this stone in history, you know, becoming unified champion what a badass yeah. victory like that, which nobody, like, them the type of fights right there, Jay. Like, when you don't really know about the guy, you see his record and stuff, but the other guy is just so favorite. Like, you wish you would have put some oh, yeah. money Hell on, yeah. the, on the bit nods for oh, a guy sure. like that in J-Rock. Shout out to him. Happy yeah, birthday. happy birthday, Mr. Mr. Uh, Williams, 32 years old. And then now, a big one. Speaking of shocking the world. Ooh. It's crazy. You want to say it or do I say it? This guy broke, he was the first first man to break my heart. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> James Buster Douglas. Was it 42 to 1 odds? Mm -hmm. 42 to 1 odds. You want to talk about shocking the world. This is arguably the biggest upset in the history of sports. Not boxing. <laughs> not you have not the history of sports. <laughs> when James Buster Douglas, April 7th, 62 years old, happy birthday, sir, came out and shocked. The world. I mean, you talking about the world's baddest man yeah. in Mike Tyson. Uh, Buster Douglas close. was a nobody. This fight was supposed to be setting up him and Holyfield. Buster Douglas' mama passed away. He was motivated. He wasn't doing coke. He wasn't banging prostitutes the week of. And boy, he put on a clinic that was, bro, what are you, what are you thoughts on Buster Douglas? That hurt my no, heart. It's just uh, just uh, say what you say about... um. Him messing up like the biggest money fight mm -hmm. at the time with Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. I'd like, I just feel so bad for Evander Holyfield. Me too, even dog. though you you remember know, his face on the side? Yeah, just... even though he, he got some money back by fighting Tyson twice, yeah. but I don't think it would have been as big as oh, the money no. he would have got there. That was just heartbreaking. To see Vander Holyfield at the fight, knowing all Tyson got <laughs> Yeah, all you got to do is whip this guy. This guy. I never heard of him. And just to see Buster Douglas inspired. Because, you, you, you know, it's things that inspire you. Oh, yeah. Especially tragedies, like you spoke on earlier, of his mama mama passing away. Uh, God bless her soul. You know, he came out there. He did that for he his mama. He promised her he was going to take it. And, dog, his mama. who saw that coming? Not a single person. He did and that you, for his mama. You could talk about the long count because Mike Tyson dropped him. Eighth or ninth round, you could say it was a long count. It doesn't matter. Mike Tyson was getting dominated the whole fight, and then he got dog. I'll never forget. I just want to tell a quick story. Uh, when Mike Tyson was walking out to the fight to the ring, I was five years old, bro, and my dad. I, I was scared for some reason. I don't know why. I was because I loved Mike Tyson, but I was scared. My dad was like, "Don't be silly. Like this guy's a nobody." <laughs> my dad told me that made me feel better. <laughs> And then Buster Douglas, man, he went against all odds. If you bet on Douglas, you got paid that day. And uh, yeah, man. kudos to you, bro, because you showed that if you believe in yourself, you showed that if you're not scared, because he wasn't scared of Mike, and that was the biggest difference. He went in there and uh, he made history, brother. So Yeah, and shout, out, shout out to Buster Douglas. And um, let's get to our next one. And speaking of, we brought up Evander Holyfield, you know. Him. Oh, yeah, some of that. That's, that's the look that you need to do. That's a mean look. That you need to do when uh, Buster Douglas beat Tyson. That's the that's a meme we need to put up going forward. But speaking of Evander Holyfield, nineteen April 8, 9th. Yeah. April 9th, nineteen eighty eight, Holyfield defeats Carlos de Leon to become the first ever undisputed cruiserweight champ uh, in history. So so that's a um, man. I love the Holyfield. I think you know, Holyfield. Like, yeah. That was a momentous uh, it was, know, bro. moment, you know, like game change. You like when you the first to do yeah. something. Bro. You remember like when I said, well, everybody talk about Andy Ruiz being the first Mexican. <laughs> <Yeah. Mexican." laughs> bro, and I, here's real quick on Holyfield. Holyfield, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated. Let's take away the PED allegations. I'm talking about pure boxing skills. 
he, I think he's one of the most underrated heavyweights to ever ever fight, bro. Because and I, people talk about him, but they don't talk about him like they talk about the Ali's, the Tyson's, the shit, even Wilder now. Like Holyfield was. I love watching him box, no, bro. He no, and he, but you can't tell me he wasn't head but Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Bro, he was head but Mike. I ain't saying it was warranted. You know, Mike Tyson bite his ear. You know, <laughs> yeah, but, no shit. Left, but he was using his head. No, Everybody, he, y'all know he was using yeah, his head. Yeah. Like, and you know, it's like. And what, what Mike said after fight? I got to go to my <laughs> children. I got to see my children. I look like a monster. I had to bite his ear. Anyway, all right. Have, uh, no, congratulations. Becoming the first ever undisputed cruiserweight champ. And then we got a big, big anniversary. April 6, 1987. If you haven't watched it, go get on YouTube. But Sugar Ray Leonard, three to one underdog, goes in there and beats Marvin Hagler by split decision. Mm -hmm. Ring Magazine called it the upset of the, the year. And then they eventually put it to upset of the decade. A lot of controversy that, controversy that fight. Hagler, or, uh, yeah, Hagler never fought again after it. Thoughts? I mean, uh, give it up to Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, coming off that. He had been out for like three years, right? Mm -hmm. He had been out yeah. for a long time. Uh, came back, took that fight, you know, and he wanted fighting in 30 second spurts. You Every know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to live to that. You know, I thought Marvin Hagler won that fight, clearly. Hagler you know, too. I ain't saying that. Sugar Ray Leonard didn't have his moments, but that's the first time you ever seen the fight where a guy win a fight off 30 second spurks. It's three minutes in the round. And if you go back and watch that fight and look at it, clearly no debating, you will see in a lot of them rounds, hurry up on the last 30 seconds, those spurks. <laughs> and a lot of the judges back then, they got fooled by their eyes and they just forgot what happened the first two minutes and 30 seconds before that. Not saying that it wasn't a good fight. I just thought that's the first time you've seen a guy win on 30-second spurts. Well, Sugar Ray was the golden boy of America, bro. Like, he had, he was like OJ, what OJ Simpson was in the NFL yeah. before he lost his shit. Uh, the white folks loved him. The back folks loved him. He was just like the golden boy of boxing, the media guy, the, the, the commercials, everything. So when he came back to fight Hagler, you know, people were excited. Hagler had been champ for a long time now uh, at that point, but you gotta re you gotta realize, bro, the mental part of it. Every time Sugar Ray Leonard did something, crowd went nuts because they loved him. And the judges, the judges, felt I think the fight could have gone either way. I'm not one of the guys that said that Hagler lost that or won that fight. Period. Damn good fight. I know. <laughs> yeah, Sugar Ray Leonard <laughs> did his thing. Uh, fight uh, upset of the decade. One of Sugar Ray Leonard's many, many awesome comebacks. So. Kudos to you. Again, check it out because it's historical. Those guys in the 80s were, if y'all are just watching boxing now, there was nothing like what happened in the 80s between Hearns, Hearns Hagler, Duran, and Leonard. Go back and check it out. Watch the Hearns, uh, Hagler. And, and that was so historical. That's like one of the most historical things that boxing fans, uh, casual fans, uh, historians going to talk about for the rest of their mm. life. That's one of the moments. In boxing, right? Oh, yeah. J.J. Solomon, that, that's going to be talked about forever. Well, shit, when we were on the beach in Florida, that was yeah. one of the fights that kept coming up. Well, I'd like Hagler Hearns, Hagler Hearns, Hagler Hearns. <laughs> I mean, not Hagler Hearns, uh, Hagler uh, Leonard. But anyhow, that's this week in boxing history. Go check it out and stay tuned after the break because we got some spit or shit coming up. TSB Spit or Shit is brought to you by the Crib Cashers. You need to sell your home quick, skip the repairs, any condition, any situation, no closing costs, no realtor commission, and have a cash offer for your home in 24 hours. Just call 214-494-1340 or visit thecribcashers.com. That's thecribcashers.com. Welcome back. Now it's time for my favorite segment of the week where we get to call out the dumb shit and we get to call out the good shit. So uh, right off the, you up first, Mr. Bradshaw. What you got? Uh, TSB Bit of the week by Mr. ITBA is Devin Haney comments on Tank Davis. I want y'all to check this out. I mean, it don't matter if you don't want to make the big fights happen. You might as well stay with your stay with your promoter that you're with now. Mm -hmm. If you don't care to to go and try to make the big fights happen, what's the point of, of even leaving your situation? You might as well stay there and be loyal to Floyd. If, if, if that's the case, like. 
on the ground a lot of things Devin Haney say, but right here he was spitting. It's like one thing I got to give Devin Haney credit for. You always see him asking for these big fights, and now he got this opportunity, opportunity, and his moment to actually accomplish his goals. Now he spoke everything correctly about Tank. <laughs> like I've been mm. trying to tell this guy, <laughs> right? Like the fighters, if you want the fight. You gonna get the fight, For sure. like because especially if you got this celebrity around you, and we look at Tank Davis. Why you think Tank Davis is so cocky now, so cocky, and say he ready to leave Mayweather promotion because he know he got that buzz around him that anybody he signed with, he gonna be able to bring an audience. But Devin Haney said it clear. Why do you want to go to somebody else? And you ain't making the fights no way. You might as well stay the May with Mayweather and be loyal to him since you ain't even made the fights when you was with him. Because fighters, if they want these fights, like Devin Haney said, they're going to get these fights. I like what you said. I don't 100% agree with what Haney said, but I do. Haney's backing it up. You know why? Because he's not getting paid what he probably should be getting paid for this Camp Bozo fight. Don't do that. No, I don't know what I'm saying. I know, but he wants to fight. He wants to combo his fight. Yeah, no so he's he's. But I'm saying he's making it happen. Do you think Tank will be taking this fight? You think Floyd Mayweather would be letting Tank take his no. fight for a pay cut? No. So that's. I don't agree 100 percent with what Haney's saying, but well, Haney's backing it up. But this is the difference. Haney, I mean, George Cambosis would have to come to America to fight Tank Davis. Tank Davis. Oh, for sure. Would have to go for to sure. Australia and fight. Tank Haney's Tank. Haney's making the fight happen, like. Like I said, he's, he's getting paid significantly less in Cambosis, which is normal. It's always been normal. This new wave of boxing where these guys think since they're undefeated, they need to get paid out the ass. But still, Devin Haney's taking a page out of the old schoolers, taking less money. He had no choice. That's You're right. He had no he choice. Had, he had no choice. He could have fought somebody else, but he wants Who the belt. Fought somebody I'm saying Haney could have fought somebody else no, for the George same Cambosis money. Cambosis could have fought somebody else. I know. He, him being... The three bet champion. He could have fought Are you taking else. away Haney's spit? No, I'm taking <laughs> away his spit. With you. I'm just letting you know he had no choice, but I give it up to Devin Haney. I do. For calling that on Tank because with him having no choice, that means I salute Devin Haney. 100%. For doing what he got to do to get what he got to get because in life, there's no rewards if you don't take no risks. 100%. And I think that's where you and I and both agree on it. The spit of the week. I got my spit. Um, My spit and my shit kind of correlate. And it seems like Devin Haney is a big, he's going to have, he's going to win a lot of spits and shits this week. All right, so my spit, Devin Haney commenting on Teofimo Lopez. Check it out. I, to, I told you guys he was delusional before, and it's starting to, to, to show, like, something's wrong. Like, he, he might need to get some help or something because, you know, I'm worried about him, for real. And, and you mean that in the most... Yeah, yeah, way, yeah, not yeah. like because of the no, social no, media no, thing. No, no, like mm -hmm. I, I truly think that you know something is wrong because he really believes that he said something about a decision. It was already made, bro. You lost. All right, so we talked about it earlier. The biggest part where I like what Haney said is <laughs> <laughs> the biggest part. I like what Haney said was, I'm worried about him. There's something going on with him. <laughs> like Teofimo Lopez, bro, is. I'm about to get into that in a little bit. I want to talk more about what Devin Haney said, but Devin Haney's comments about I'm worried there might be something wrong with him I've been saying he's delusional and I'm worried that there's something wrong upstairs bro I'm starting to worry there's something wrong upstairs with Teofimo Lopez because remember after the fight this was a joke at first but when he said I won that fight I won that fight 11 rounds to two that's 13 rounds guys y'all don't got your calculators out at first I thought it was just a joke, but there could be something significantly wrong with Teofimo Lopez and we need to listen because we've seen up and down his Twitter that he's been going, he's had suicidal thoughts, he's been depressed, and like I said about Ryan Garcia earlier, I'm never going to not take that shit serious. If Teofimo just making excuses or not, there could be something significantly wrong with him, bro, mm -hmm. and... We need to we need to make sure he's okay as a boxing base. Like we don't want something to happen to the dude, just like we don't want something to happen to Ryan Garcia or any of these fighters. There's something not clicking, and and I'm gonna go ahead and lead straight to my shit if you're cool with that. No, 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 hold on, no, no, you, you don't want me to. I'm, I'm with you on like if you need to get checked, you need to get checked. But the biggest thing that's wrong with Teofimo Lopez is his ego. Oh, it's terrible, like, man. It's his ego. 
He lost the fight fair and square. He thought he he was going to win. He thought he was that guy, but I think it's his ego. But I do agree. Like, the way he talking, Some, scrolling up and down Twitter with these suicides at the top. Like, how can you sanction a dude like that to fight? Yeah. But without getting him checked, so. Yeah, yeah you I'm can't just be throwing these fighters in the ring when you know something's up. He went back and deleted a lot of his tweets, but there's something going on with that man, Teofimo Lopez. Uh... I'm about to talk a little shit about you, but <laughs> I hope you're okay, though, bro. So, like, uh, if you need help, get some help. But with all that being said, let's go to my shit of the week with Mr. Teofimo Lopez Sr. and Jr. and them being completely delusional. Check it out. This is what Devin Haney was talking about. The whole shit was a scheme, bro. They had the zone. I was on the zone platform. They gave it a Cambosis because they know what I was going to do with it. <laughs> oh, he's he's 100% good because he knows what happened. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like we lost that fight. Bruh. Yeah. What was that? Jeez, man. Again, I hope you're okay. <laughs> but Teofimo Lopez, senior and junior. <laughs> what in the hell, man? You got beat. Fair and square. If you, if you believe that you're the better fighter, but maybe you had a bad night, say that. But you did not win that fight. Nobody says you won in that fight besides you and your daddy. Y'all got to tap it, pump the brakes a little bit. Nobody's out to get Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo, people like watching you fight. Nobody's out to get you. You're a draw. You're fun to watch. You talk shit. Nobody. The zone, ESPN, nobody's out to get you. Nobody's out to get your dad. Nobody's out to give Devin Haney an opportunity to not you. You lost the fight. Come back and win it if you're doing all that shit. If you're talking all that shit, come back and win the fight, buddy. Like... You and your dad are off the walls. Y'all are the two most delusional <laughs> pair I've ever seen in boxing. And I've been watching boxing since I was this big. So come on, get it together, because it's pissing a lot of people off. And y'all's credibility is going away, right? Yeah. People like Teofimo Lopez. But I, even, I was a big... Yeah. I was big on Teofimo. Even Nobody Lopez, could tell me nothing, because he did it the hard way. Yeah. He earned it, right? From Lomachenko, the Matrix. Nobody could beat this yeah, But guy. this is my problem with T.O. right here, though, Jason. Him saying that, and while I do agree with you, Ben, what you say, he delusional, great shit of the week. He said it was made yes. for Devin Haney. Like, Devin Haney had to sign a contract with top rank. It ain't like this fight is on the zone. He is actually your stable man. <laughs> yes. It don't make no Things damn that sense. Make, you man. Say. <laughs> make me say 11 plus 2 is 13. Y'all fight 12 rounds, <laughs> first of all. Second of all, bro. The division is loaded. You've got tons of talent. Go make it happen instead of looking like a fool, dog. So that's my shit of the week. And my TSB <laughs> shit of the this week. This guy just keep popping up. I mean, well, damn. Devin Haney, you was my spit of the week. And also, Devin Haney, you're my shit of the week. <laughs> don't say we don't call it like we see it. Shit. Yeah, like we're talking. <laughs> so, George Cambosis, he said this right here, ladies and gentlemen. He told Devin Haney you was a good kid. I, I want y'all to check this little clip out, Cambosa said. Check it out. I respect that. He's a good kid. I just know that we chose you. We looked for the biggest fights. Could afford anybody. There's a reason why. Hey, bro, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> did y'all see that? Now, now that, that look, you, you can see that was not malicious. He was just saying Devin Haney was a, 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 a good kid, like, because he is, if you see him. Now, I want y'all to check out. Devin Haney's. I'm not a kid, so he can stop calling me a kid. I'm a man, and I will show him that in the ring. Respect me as a man, and uh, uh, if he doesn't want to respect me as a man, show me. I'll Ladies and gentlemen, in the ring. this dude said, don't call me no kid. Treat me like a man. I'm going to show you what a man is when I get inside that square circle, and, you, and you're going to respect me like a man. I'm like, okay, Devin Haney, that would have been cool. <laughs> that would have been cool, and I would have took that for what it was if you didn't have your father and Bill Haney sitting next to you. It's like he telling them, treat me like I'm a man. He sound like the coach from Oklahoma State talking about, don't talk to them. Talk to me. Treat me like a man. I'm 40. I'm 40, bro. You can't be talking about your man when you got when you got daddy standing beside you all the time, fighting your fights, fighting your Twitter beef, stop fighting every talking shit to you. Yeah, like it's like Devin Haney, like dude, don't talk about 
treat you like a man and say you're a man like dude i i know that you we know that you're a man but you talking about you a man but with your daddy right here in the press conferences with you and another thing bothered me about Devin haney he talking about i'm gonna take everything was was good with cambosis and I'm going to take it away from him. I'm like, dude, come on. Now, Devin Haney, you ain't no Floyd Mayweather. And George Cambosis definitely ain't no Churro Gotti. He way better than no Churro Gotti. And I'm like, Devin Haney, where's the proof? Where's the evidence in any one of your fights that you show that you're going to take, except the fighters you fought in Mexico? Where's the proof in any one of your fights in the States that you're going to take everything that's good away from George Campos's? But, dude, stop talking about talk to you like a man when you got your daddy sitting right there next to you. A man, if you really about that with George Campos, it's supposed to be you and him in that press conference. You've seen George sitting by himself. Why not you? And that's my shit of the week. That's weird, bro. Stay tuned for our main event. Here it comes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. TSB main event brought to you by Overhead Door Pros. Fellas, if you can't get it up, you need to call Overhead Door Pros. These guys get the job done right and get out fast. You can call them at 817-689-9906 or visit www.garagedoorsrus.com on facebook.com Overhead Door Pros. TSB main event, JJ Solomon, April 16th, Cowboy Stadium, AT&T Cowboy Stadium. You got Earl the True Spence Jr., IBF, Mm. WBC, mm. Uh, uh, unde undefeated, mm. welterweight champion of the world against Yorganus Ugas. Mm. I think Earl Spence 27 and no 21 knockouts against Yorganus Ugas. Mm. Welterweight champion, WBA of the world, 27 victories, four losses. Retired Manny. Retired Manny, uh, really beat Sean Porter, but you know, that's how these privileged American judges do sometimes because you know they want to see that Earl Spence versus Sean Porter but in all seriousness this is a this is a real fight right here like I know everybody been joking about this fight everybody been talking uh Lee uh all on Earl Spence saying Earl Spence you know he's just gonna go in here and dominate this opponent mm -mm. in uh your game the Sugas but this is a tougher fighter than people expect it ain't look like I was mentioning to you the, both of these fighters are great. You know, they wouldn't be in the position that they're at if they wasn't great. They wouldn't be there if they wasn't great. This is the thing about the fight. Both of these fighters have been through a lot, too, mm -hmm. in their career, whether it was tragic for Earl Spence or whether it was tragic in, like, in the sense of a robbery of a guy in Jorganus Ugas and the guy who had to do it the harder way to get back where he at. So I look at these, both of these guys, fundamentally sound. They're both Olympians. I think Ugas 2008, if I'm not mistaken, Earl Spence 2012. So when it comes to fundamentals and skills, both of these guys post to be here. It's going to mm. be about who has the fortitude, who gonna be able to take it to the next level, who gonna be able to do more, who gonna be able to, it's a lot. But, but what's your thoughts on it? Because this is my thing right here with Earl Spence, we know what he gonna do. And with Yorganus Ugas, if he's trying to beat Earl Spence, we need to see him do something no other fighters have did. And Ugas has that in his arsenal, where Ugas goes to the body. I have not seen one fighter who fought Earl Spence who has been effective as going to the body. They don't make that a plan in their mm -hmm. in that game plan to make that happen. And when you look at a guy like uh, Ugas, he is a devastating body puncher. Go watch his fights. That's what he do. And me watching footage of his clips, I see that. Now with Earl Spence, this is the key for him to victory. To do the same thing that he do, but he's fighting a marksman in um in uh Ugas who, who 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 punches, I think, or a little bit more precise. But see, Earl Spence, what he has is a devastating jab, like a long jab that sets up all his offense. Yep. That jab has to be superb. We know he's physically gifted going to the body and doing what he do. But if if his jab isn't as superb, it's Uga's jab. 
then that's when we have a problem. So I think Earl Spence's jab is going to be the key for him winning this fight. And I think Uga's body work is going to be the key for him. I like it, dog. And we have to break this fight down like that. I One of my favorite things I've seen from Ugas recently was him working with Coach Salas. And, and Coach was backing him up. And, and he was he was fighting, backing him up, seeing how he responds, seeing his reflexes, still throwing shots, still timing, still trying to time while going backwards. And a lot of fighters don't don't prepare for that. A lot of fighters say, "No, I'm gonna be the one hunting you down. I'm, a, I'm I don't have to train going backwards because no, like Coach Salas said, it's no easy piece. They're preparing for everything." Spence tries to walk his opponents down. He tries to get them fighting backwards. And, and Ugas is getting ready for it. And like you said, bro, Ugas is a sound technical fighter. The way a lot of Cuban fighters are. They're technical fighters. Their ring IQ is up there. They know they don't get surprised in the ring. So we have to break this down, bro, because I don't know who. I, I'm leaning towards Spence. I'm leaning towards Spence in a close fight, but I would not be surprised one bit of Ugas wins is because he's got the discipline, the preparation, the experience. You want, like what you said earlier, these guys have come from harsh, harsh events happening in their life. We've seen what happened to Spence. We've seen the car accident. We've seen the torn retina. But you cannot dismiss where, where Ugas comes from. Coming from Cuba, bro, is no joke. That's a fight itself. <laughs> Every day. Being a kid in Cuba is a fight. Being an adolescent in Cuba is a fight. Trying to get a job in Cuba is a fight. Trying to get out of Cuba is a fight. And and Ugas has been fighting his whole life. And you know what I like about Ugas, bro? He's he's a class act. He's not talking shit. He's not saying... You know, you, you like to see that shit talking a little bit. But given everything Ugas has gone through in his life, coming from, like I said, Cuba, Cuba... Taking them losses. the I don't want to call it a robbery, but could should have gone his way against Porter. And now he's here. He's handled the adversity. He came in last minute against Manny Pacquiao. Everybody loves Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao just came off a fight with Keith Thurman where he looked damn good. And Ugas silenced everything good that Pacquiao did. Yeah, Pacquiao was old, but Ugas... I had a response for everything Pacquiao had. And are we going to see that against Spence? Like what, like what Spence said, I do everything better than Ugas. Do you believe that? No, I don't. What, what is it about but, Ugas but, that has the advantage of? I, I don't. I just think U Ugas is a sharper puncher. And I think Ugas... Uh, uh, probably move. Uh, he moves better in a in a boxer's form, and I think he goes uh, to the body just as good as Earl Spence. So when I look at both of their attributes, I think this is an even fight because mm -hmm. I don't think Earl Spence ever had anyone as long uh, who do the same things he do. Who is tough? Ugas is tough. Tough. I don't think he had an opponent as tough, like as tough as Earl Spence is. But this is where. Um, you got to love Earl Spence, you know, coming back from that horrific uh, accident, you know, and like you can look at this championship fight with uh, Kell Brook going across the pond and winning it. That's not the most memorable moment to me. At first yeah. it was. Yeah. At, at first it was. But with him coming back after that horrific car injury and was able to put on a performance like that against Danny Garcia and convincingly winning that round, that just showed the person Spence is. When I tell everybody from the 214 to across the pond, Ugas is tough. Ugas come from a background, but Earl is tough too. Earl is a dog. I've never up close personally seen anybody who work as hard and as efficient in his work ethic as this dude is. Yeah, Earl had problems outside of the ring where it was a lot of speculations about everything, but his work ethic that he does when he's inside that gym, I think that helped him uh, go through all the other things that he was doing that were not right outside the ring. Now, with Earl Spence coming into this fight, going through everything he went through, knowing, like he said, 
one opportunity, another opportunity where his career could have been over and he has been blessed with this third opportunity, man, this is a motherfucking fight. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. I got a question for you. A few weeks ago, I think episode three, four, I forgot what it was. You said, I don't, you said, A, you weren't excited about the fight. B, you don't think this fight's going to do pay-per-view sales. As time has passed, have you have you changed? Yeah, your, and you yeah. know what? Like that, I want everybody to know. Like I'm a human. Yeah, we all human. You know, I ain't perfect. I felt how I felt, and at that time, I meant how I felt about that. Because when that fight was announced, that wasn't the fight the real bosses sure. of boxing wanted. But like you say, like I already knew Ugas was that guy. But as time has been able to go on, this is a serious fight i'm i'm more excited about this fight than i done been excited about Hell a lot of fights yeah. and i want to tell you this not just speaking of this fight i have to give boxing for these first six months of fight they get a a plus 2022 plus. 2022 absolutely a plus plus if you look at our lineup in april <laughs> with uh shakur versus valdez uh, so, uh triple uh, g uh triple g um who is the so uh uh for jake paul uh ryan garcia what are you talking about jake paul with jake paul she signed with him. oh amanda serrano amanda, i'm oh, sorry amanda yeah. amanda serrano fighting katie taylor in may canelo versus bivel then you what else in may we just said something. we got ryan garcia we got triple g it's a loaded loaded and loaded. in june you got jamel charlo versus brian castaño for undisputed Build it, bro. Like, look, boxing. Like, thank you. We thank haven't gone through a streak like this of good fights. Since 2015. Good, it's been a minute, they, man. They heard us. And from like, here on out, every weekend, bro, there's something every weekend. <laughs> and I know bullshit something. <laughs> Not Jake Paul versus fucking whoever. Like, we have something every weekend. But I want to take it back to Spence real quick, though. Do you think... Do you believe Spence when he said, I wanted to show Mikey Garcia a boxing lesson? I wanted to show people that I could box. Or do you think there's anything to worry about that he couldn't get rid of Mikey Garcia, that he couldn't knock him out? No, I, I, don't, I don't believe that. You don't believe I, what? I don't believe Earl Spence when he said, I don't believe no fighter when they say they want to show people that they could box. Like, you don't get paid overtime. I'm going to take that. No, no, hold up. Yeah. You don't get paid overtime in, yeah. in boxing. This is a dangerous sport. Now, it's and, and I, you can't knock him for saying that. Just say Earl Spence, okay, I couldn't get him out of there, and I got a chance to show y'all my boxing abilities. Where well, he did show boxing abilities that night, but to say was I was plan. trying, yeah, or it was, was planned, plan, that's a blatant lie because you don't get paid for overtime. Boxers on in the ring, if they can get the fighter right there in 15 seconds, that's what they want to do. Because so, that sells tickets. Do you sell, do believe, I believe I don't that believe he it. was trying to show the world? I don't believe it. He, he, he I think, the box. I think that knockout sell tickets. Like, knockout sell tickets. Errol Spence, we all knew he was a good boxer. He had a good amateur career. He was an Olympian. You know what? That, that that takes boxing, yeah, fighting in the yeah. Olympics, finding, having a good amateur career. We already knew he was a good boxer. I think Mikey Garcia is also a good boxer. Obviously, he's not as dangerous coming from a lighter, lighter division. But I'm with you. I don't think he planned that. But... He showed that he can box. Yeah, but he was trying to knock. He threw over twelve hundred punches yep. in that fight. He showed he could box, but he was trying to knock. Yeah, Michael I don't Garcia buy it for a second. He couldn't knock him out. Do you think that's something to be concerned about going into the fight with Ugas? Do you oh. think Ugas is going to get to a point where he doesn't respect Spence's power? Because no, let's be real. When's the last time we seen Spence get knocked? Two thousand sixteen when he fought been Ocampo. A minute, bro. And since he started facing like top top, then we got to give Mikey Garcia that credit, mm -hmm. even though you know he came up. Uh, a one way class yeah. lower. We got to give him that credit that he is a top boxer. But ever since Spence have stepped up to this level, he's not been able to knock out the top guys. And if you look at your game as Ugas, that is a guy who hit tall. Sean Porter said it. He was a tougher fight than Earl Spence. That speak volumes to me. I love it, dog. I think that. <coughs> Bless you. God bless you. I I uh, think that Spence, like right now, like what we were saying earlier about uh, about Ryan Garcia, and like you have to make it happen now mm -hmm. because there's so much money, there's so much glory to be had after this fight this weekend. 
Spence makes his fight happen. He comes out and looks damn good against Ugas, and he wins. Dude, look at the future Spence has now. To solidify, he's he's going to be chasing undisputed if he chooses to stay at 147. If not, he can move up to 154. There's Charlo there. Bud Bud's mentioned moving up to 154. Like now's the time right now for Spence to shut up his critics. He comes out and looks good against Ugas. Signs up, signs a nice, good follow-up fight, not some bullshit fight. Spence is, has an opportunity right now to solidify his name in boxing history. He's just got to make it happen. Do I think he can make it happen? Yes. Do I think he's going to make it happen? Yes. Now, if he fights Bud, that's up. I don't care. I you say, so you think he's going to be Ugas? I think he's going to be Ugas. I, I'm yet to be determined yeah. on this fight because you have to also take into uh, fact that Earl Spence is coming out of regular surgery. Mm -hmm. That's something that took fighters three years. That's something that retired fighters. Yep. And that's what you got to give Earl Spence credit for. He could have came back and took an easy fight easy coming out of regular. He came back and he took a dog. So that just show you what type of guy he is. So that's, you can't question who he is. Yep. I would never question who he is. But this is a tough pickle he put himself <laughs> in. Hell yeah, him. bro. This could easily blow up in his face I'm, I'm 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 nervous about this fight because i tell people this all the time look we from dallas texas like i i have no pick in this i have no hand in this fight i could care less who, who wins this fight i i mean i i i i don't care who win this fight may, may the best man win let me say it like that may the best man win but me looking on the outside in at boxing I think it's better for boxing, like you said, for what's ahead for Earl Smith to win 100%. this fight. And me being from Dallas, Texas. Oh, yeah. Like the type of attention Earl Smith brings. He is Texas' favorite son oh, yeah. when it comes to boxing. The type of attention that he brings, which give us opportunity to kick off oh, our yeah. first NFT uh, party oh, yeah. at Cowboy Stadium at the two biggest suites. Everybody go to TSBNFT.com. If you're trying to get in that Earl Spence fight, we have our NFTs. But that's just him winning for here. We ain't had that in a long time. Yeah. Where well, we have this type of attention around us. So that's just good for our brand, for us personally. But for the sport of boxing, I think it's bigger if Earl Spence win because of that guy, that other guy out there. I don't want to mention his name because we can't look past. Ugas. Ugas. Dennis Ugas. And you know what I get scared about is that we are all, we're all looking forward to Bud and Spence now that Bud allegedly is getting this PBC deal, right? But remember Pacquiao Mayweather. I mean, the roads were going, we were excited, and then Marquez showed up and shot the world and slept Manny Pacquiao. And then we had to wait even longer for Mayweather Pacquiao. I'm scared that I, I want to see Spence and Bud so bad. Like I want to see that fight happen so because I don't. I think Bud will win that fight. But I don't. Man, I don't know. I don't really know. But I'm afraid that Ugas can't come out here. He lands a shot on that eye. What if he's targeting that eye, which would not be a bad game plan. You got to. Yeah, you got to target the eye. And what if he ends Spence's career, bro? Like, this, like you said, it's a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous fight for Spence. Not just because of who it is, but because where he's at in his career. What he's coming off of. So if Spence wins this fight, he is making a point. He is saying, I belong here. I don't care about the shit that's happened in my history. I'm still a damn good fighter. And let's line them up. Who's next? I Bud, mean, Charlo, anybody. I'll take anybody. He get like he gonna get like this is a, a real fight that he's fighting. Like he gets super credit. Like we here on the spit bucket, Mr. Al TBA, Karay Bradshaw, JJ Solomon, we give him full credit because Ugas ain't just any other regular guy. This is a real opponent. Real quick before we go, what's it going to take for Ugas to win? What's it going to take for Spitz to win? And who do you think is taking it? I have no idea who's taking the fight. <laughs> hell that's yeah, how, that's hell how yeah. I'm like, it's yeah. like, I don't know, like, because both of these guys, they got a backstory. Like I say, Ugas Getting it the harder way. Earl Smith's going through what he went through. You know, he's trying to show the world he is still that same guy. Ugas just coming off his big moment with Manny Pacquiao. Like I say, when it comes to attributes, they do a lot of the same things because they are both former Olympians. So it's just the, the, the roll of, of a dice. 
I, I have no idea who gonna win this fight. That's how close and competitive this fight gonna be. But let me speak some truth to the power, power to the truth. Ugas has to go in here and beat the hell out of Earl Spence to get this fight in Texas. And that's just how it always it has be. To be. That's boxing. Or he has to knock Earl Spence out. Point blank period. And that's why I don't see happening. I don't see Spence getting a knockout or getting knocked out. I don't see Spence getting a knockout. I think, to your point earlier, I think Spence's jab is going to make the difference. I think he's going to dictate dictate the fight. I think he'll have Ugas going backwards. He'll have Ugas guessing, trying to figure out how to respond. Because I, I think Spence is versatile. I don't think Spence is a one-trick pony. So I think Spence's jab, man, I think that's going to – Spence's jab, his ability to stalk his opponents, I think that's going to take it, bro. And Spence gets hit, but he can take a shot from what we've seen so far. So uh, I think Spence takes it, but – Damn, I'm excited, bro. April 16th, baby. April 16th. April 16th. You guys get an opportunity to be in the two largest suites in the largest stadium for one of the largest fights of the year with the Spit Bucket Podcast. Go check out tsbnft.com. Click on Browse. Pick yourself an NFT, and you will get to get... Get in the suites with us, enjoy the fight, network with other NFT people, network with other millionaires. There's going to be millionaires in there who have their own NFT connection. Just be in there, enjoy the fights with us, have some drinks with us. Let's chit chat. Let's talk that shit. TSBNFT.com. They're cheaper than the nosebleeds. Plus, you get lifetime access to all of our future events. It doesn't end with spent Ugas. So as a boxing community, join us. Grow with us, be with us. Um, and another thing, yeah. before we close the show, everybody know everything that we do. Yes, sir. You see what they say across this shirt? TSB. TSB Warrior Foundation. Everything we do, 10% of our proceeds go back to the TSB Warriors Foundations of fighters who have been critically injured or passed away in the sport of boxing. We're going to do on our end what we can to contribute. So, everybody, make sure y'all go to the spitbucketpodcast.com. Go get our merchandise, hoodies, uh, caps, uh, beanies, uh, T-shirts, uh, white beaters, yeah, you, you know, man. tank tops. Y'all make sure y'all go support the movement because this is a special uh kind of movement that you need to Which really go put for effort to help us get to the TSB Warrior Foundation. It's probably the proudest thing we're doing, I'm doing. I'm most proud of our Warrior Foundation because our whole spirit, our whole goal is to give back, give back to amateurs, give back to kids, spotlight them. But man, there's people who can't do anything anymore because all they know is boxing and fighting. And now that's been taken away from them. And that's what the Spit Bucket is doing to give back to those guys. 10% going to our TSB Warrior Foundation, the Spit Bucket Podcast. Dot com. Check out our merch. Check out our NFTs. Everything we do from charities, uh, donations, like we have our cash app. Ten percent of that's going back to Spit Bucket Warrior Foundation. Uh, check it out. And right. we hope everybody show up and show out. Make sure y'all go oh, to yeah. TSBNFT.com. Go get our big head collection of NFTs. Make sure y'all in these suites with us April the 16th. When I tell you, me and my guy to the side of me, JJ Solomon, we're going to be turned all the way up and, and it's going to be like a momentous occasion to where everybody who in the biggest suites in Cowboy Stadium with us, we're going to have a great, great time. So make sure y'all go the tsbnft.com thanks for tuning in tune in next week share with your friends share with your family subscribe please subscribe so that way you know when we're on and we will see you next week for episode nine thank you guys very much salute